Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today, I have some good news and I have some bad news to share with you. Beginning with the bad news, unfortunately over the weekend, I had a family emergency. My wife had a severe allergic reaction to a medication and required immediate medical attention. So I've been very focused in on her for the last couple of days. Fortunately, she's back home and doing great and all seems well. So thank God for that. Just prior to doing that, I was actually actively working on NB Miner, the latest version 41.0 to see what I could get with my LHR unlocking on it. I plan to cover that and share all my overclock settings. So if you haven't already subscribed, press down on that subscribe button to show you support for my channel, as well as be notified of any future updates. I have a lot to cover, but we're gonna try to do it quick today. So stick with me and let's get started. Looking at the NB Miner GitHub site, I'm happy to see that they've posted an update a couple of days ago, and it's NB Miner version 41.0. I'm really happy because they went from doing a partial unlock that now they've jumped all the way up to the front of the line, and they have a 100% LHR unlocker added for both Windows and Linux. So looking at the change log, it says run NB Miner with admin privileges to get 100% LHR unlocked, tested and verified with drivers 512.15 for Windows, and 510.60 for Linux. It's actually 510.60.02 that I've tested. And I wanna point out that the drivers are the big key. If you're not using these drivers and you're encountering problems, it's probably because you're not using these drivers. So make sure you're using the correct driver for Windows or Linux that they're stating in their GitHub page. And the best part is, is that HiveOS was very quick to adopt this release. So this release is part of a standard upgrade if you update it within HiveOS. The only thing you may have to do is you may have to update the video driver, NVIDIA driver 510.60. I've used 510.60.02, and that's what gave me great results. So let me switch over to my LHR rig. This is NB Miner version 41.0, and it's running on my dedicated test rig. My dedicated test rig has six different LHR card models. Some cards I have duplicates. I have everything ranging from a RTX 3060 V2 all the way up through to an RTX 3080 Ti and all the primary LHR models in between. But look at these hash rates. They are absolutely epic. And if I didn't know better, I would swear this is a full hash rate rig here with all, based on a lot of the numbers. I'm seeing almost 100 mega hash on my 3080. I'm seeing over 60 mega hash on my 3070. And that's a really important point because now that they have the full LHR unlock on these cards, the cards are gonna be behave just like full hash rate cards. So I'm gonna be more conservative with my memory overclocking going forward. I don't want to damage or hurt my cards. And that's my recommendation to a lot of my viewers. Just be conservative with what you're doing. A lot of the overclock settings we were using in the previous LHR unlockers that were giving us like 75 to 80%, we could run with a higher memory overclock because it was mining intermittently. It would be mining low, then high, then low, then high. So we could really boost those memory overclocks pretty high sometimes. But think if you had a 3080 card, would you be putting it at plus 1500 in Windows as your memory overclock? I know I wouldn't because it would damage the card probably pretty quickly unless I had some amazing water cooling or thermals. And that's the same approach I'm gonna be taking with my LHR cards going forward with this miner. I want longevity, I want the cards to last, and I'm gonna be a little bit more conservative, watch the thermals, and consider and treat these cards just like full hash rate cards. Don't overclock them too high because you may burn them out and you don't wanna damage them or have to get into a situation where you have to RMA a card because you overran it. I've never had to RMA a card. Not that I'm a professional or a guru at it, but I try to be more conservative, and that's my recommendation to you. With that said, let me start sharing my overclocks with you. Before we begin the overclocks, let me get you familiar with my screen layout. Off to the side of me, you're gonna see the miner screen, and it's actually running in Hive OS, NB Miner version 41.0 that I've just taken the latest update from Hive OS, and that's been running, and it's running great for me now. Behind me, I'm gonna be sharing my Hive overclock settings that I've used in Hive, as well as you see the driver I've used. Driver is version 510.60.02. And up on the very top, I'm gonna to be sharing the window settings to run the MB Miner 
you'd be replacing your pool and wallet with the values that I have in brackets there. And there's going to be the core clock locks as well as the memory clock offset and some fan suggestions. Keep in mind that every rig and every card and environment is different. So my memory overclocks work great maybe for me, but depending upon your environment as well as your cooling and ventilation, you may want to adapt your memory overclocks maybe a little bit higher or lower as well as your fan settings. And with that said, let's get into our testing. The first card I tested is my RTX 3060s. I have two of them and they're the V2 cards. And these are great cards. Using the latest version of the miner, it's giving me this incredible performance I've never seen before. Using a locked core clock of 1530 and a memory clock offset of 2200 and high or 1100 in Windows, I got incredible results. I was able to get 48.3 mega hash on average with a 424 efficiency. The next card I tested is my RTX 3060 Ti. This is the Zotac white card with the Hynix memory and I can't overclock the memory very high using a locked core clock of 1380 and a memory clock offset of 2050 in Hive and 1025 in Windows. I got epic results for this card for the first time. I was able to get 59.9 mega hash at a 0.434 efficiency. The next card I tested was my EVGA, my RTX 3070 LHR card and it gave me incredible results looking just like a regular full hash rate 3070 using a locked core clock of 1065 and a memory clock offset of 2200 in Hive OS, 1100 in Windows. I got incredible results just like a full hash rate card. I was able to get 60.6 mega hash on average at a 0.551 efficiency. That's right, 0.551 efficiency. That is incredible. The next card I test is my RTX 3070 Ti's. I have two of them in this rig and they both performed absolutely fantastic using a locked core clock of 975 and a memory clock offset of 2250 in Hive OS and 1125 in Windows. I got my highest results ever. 79.4 mega hash at a 0.432 efficiency. The next card I tested was my RTX 3080 my EVGA LHR card and using a locked core clock of 1050 and a memory clock offset of 2200 and high, 1100 and windows, I got results just like a full hash rate RTX 3080 card. I was getting 98.9 mega hash at a 0 0.430 efficiency. Now off camera when I was doing my testing, I know I can push this card above 100 mega hash, probably to 101 but I didn't want the thermal temperatures to run that high. So that's something to always keep in mind. You may be able to dial your cards up a little bit higher, or if they're running too high, you may have to reduce them down a little bit to keep those thermals at a safe, comfortable range. But I was very, very happy with these results. The last card I tested was my RTX 3080 Ti. And wow, did this card really hit a home run in my opinion. Using a locked core clock of 1110, and a memory clock offset of 2300 and Hive and plus 1150 in Windows. I got results just like an RTX 3090 card. I was able to get 119.5 mega hash at a 0.454 efficiency. Now, once again, I know I can run this card harder. I was even testing it off camera and brought it up to over 121 and barely touching 122. So I could push this card higher if I want to, but once again, I don't want to overload the thermals on the card. But to me, this is probably as efficient or more efficient even than an RTX 3090 card is. So these are my best mining results I've ever seen before on any of the LHR unlockers. Although this miner ran fantastic for me in Hive, it's not without its issues. There is some known issues that I'm even seeing and experiencing on my rig. Although these numbers look beautiful right now from what I'm seeing, sometimes I find after I'm running the rig for a little while, I'll see one of the cards, typically a 3070 or a 3070 Ti. I'll just suddenly watch the hash rate just get chopped in half. Let me show you what that looks like. NB Miner 41.0 looks great and it ran great for me in Hive most of the time, but it's not without issues. I have found sometimes on this rig that it would randomly just pick a card and then the hash rate would just get dropped in almost half. Here you're seeing on the screen card ID number four. Look, it's a 3070 Ti. It dropped its hash rate from about 79 to 30.7. 
And I've seen this not just on this card, I've seen it on different cards, and I've tried even tweaking the memory overclocks, and I was still getting this random hash rate drop. And I wasn't able to just restart the miner. I had to reboot the entire rig. But I'm gonna be following this really close as well, and any updates about it. I really had a great time testing this miner and finally being able to share my mining results and overclock settings with you. And hopefully it gives you some great guidance going forward on how to tune your LHR cards. As always though, to be conservative with your overclock tuning. Consider ourselves lucky now because we practically have full hash rate cards with our LHR cards and tune them accordingly. Don't run the memory overclocks too high and don't you know run them to get that every little ounce of mega hash out of them because you may damage or hurt your card early and you don't want to do that. That's just my thoughts. I want my cards to stay around for a long time to be able to mine and I hope yours do too. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up like. Don't forget to press down on that subscribe button so you're notified of future video updates. I'm going to be following this miner and other miners really closely. I've already covered Excavator and I hear there's some stir going on at T-Rex. But time will tell for that and you know I'll be all over it. So I'm back. I want to be here and keep you informed. So I welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Till next time, stay safe. See you on the next video. Happy mining!